So thank you very much for coming. I am uh, both humbled by your support and very excited because it's going to be a fun day. I, I can tell by the chatter already. You guys are enjoying getting to know each other and that's one of the goals is to let people network and get to know each other. And so sort of speaking of goals, just let me uh, identify kind of what we're going after today. Uh, my goal is that you'll leave with this confidence that you'll have the ability to increase your creative output. Uh, we're going to test drive some creative techniques and we're going to use the worksheet there. So the stuff I'm going to talk about, you're actually going to implement right away. You're going to try it out and then hopefully you'll be able to use it out in the real world as well. Um, you may already have a creative process, you may not. Either way, you're fine. Hopefully you'll refine your creative process if you've got one, maybe pick up some new ideas, or then if you don't have one, then I'll introduce some things that you can learn and, uh, and grow from. Uh, to be totally transparent, I hope you'll trust me enough to hire me as a coach or an in-house seminar leader or, or a consultant. And I hope that you guys are going to meet each other. And then finally, I want you to have fun. And I don't want to underestimate that. I think a lot of times in our lives, we, we get so serious with our commitments and our responsibilities. And a lot of us spend a lot of time in, behind a computer. And my goal is to get you out from behind the computer and, and sort of go connect with your inner child, if you will, and do a little cut and paste and play. And I think that uh, the fun part is, is a huge part of it today. So make sure you. Uh, implement that and uh, enjoy. So we've got a pretty full schedule. We're going to be uh, doing some exercises, some lecture. I've got some film. I've got some uh, sound. So it's a whole multimedia experience. I'm going to give you a little background on me and sort of how I see the world and where I come from. So this is kind of a quick uh, snapshot. Uh, we already did that. So we're moving on. Probably wondering who is this guy. So when I was a little kid, I started out, and when I would get in trouble, my parents would send me to my room, and they thought that that was like some sort of punishment, but little did they know that what it really meant was I got to create stuff. And so when I was really young, it was like drawing race cars, and then I got into drawing surfboard graphics. And then from there, uh, I probably should have known that I was going to be a graphic designer when I was in high school, and I wanted to have a fake ID that said I was 18 so I could go down to Mexico and go to some bars. <laughs> and uh, at the same time, I was in student government at Poway High School here, and I was applying for colleges, and I had this letterhead from UCLA, and it was just had the logo, and it was totally white at the top. And I saw this opportunity. <laughs> and I cut out the, um, the letterhead, and I ran through the typewriter, and I added this information here. This was pre-computer, by the way, so to date myself a little bit. Uh, added the information, and then cut out my high school uh, photo and stuck it on here. And then since I was in student government, I had access to the laminating machine, which was really a lot of power, and then I made this fake ID. <laughs> so then when I was applying to colleges, I, I applied to UCLA, and did I get in? No, I ended up going to USC <laughs> and uh, studied international relations and got a minor in marketing. From there, I went to work for Reebok as a sales rep and got into regional marketing. And it was a great job, but at night, I was I'd taking these classes at UCLA in graphic design. And I had this sort of light bulb that went off. It's like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And interestingly, one of the projects was an advertising project, and we had to come up, it was for Gold's Gym, and we had to come up with an advertising campaign. So I'd come up with this advertising campaign that was sort of all based on superheroes, and uh, that was one execution, and then this was another one. Uh, so I think the superhero thing sort of started early, and now I'm continuing to carry it forward. So after design school, I went to work for a design firm up in Los Angeles called Bright Strategic Design. Then another one called the Mednick Group, which then formed into Think New Ideas. And then all the while, I was kind of in the back of my mind thinking, well, eventually I would like to start out on my own. So I was like copying their contracts and thinking like, what do they do well and what could I do differently? And then 15 years ago, um, no, about 12 years ago, sorry, I started LaCour's Design. I was still up in Los Angeles, kind of focusing in four areas. Uh, one of which was architecture, engineering, and construction. So then when I moved down to San Diego, I just kind of focused in that area. And probably about 80% of our work is in the architecture, engineering, and construction, which was probably why you're hearing all these architects and builders and things here in the group. Um, so what we do, we design corporate identity, logo, branding. We design brochures. 
And then this one should look familiar to Kurt. This is his company. We designed his website. And we teamed with Scott Robinson. So we were partners on that. And so, uh, and a lot of you are, have been clients and maybe are going to be clients, so it's great to, to have that in the mix. So I've been doing this for the last, you know, in total graphic design for about 15 years, and I'll continue to do it. I love doing it, but I'm also trying some new things, and so I'm doing more writing, and I'm doing more public speaking and seminars like this, kind of all centered around creativity, marketing, and branding. And uh, so I like to think that uh, the sort of common thread that runs through all these things is trying to use my powers for good, right? <laughs> so that's my, my superhero is uh, telekinetics, being able to move things with my mind. And uh, I have this new, what I call sort of purpose statement, which is creative expression flows through me as a catalyst for positive change. And so that change can be education, it can be change, you know, helping the environment, that change could be helping people learn these concepts and uh, I'm very excited about it. So on your table you have a, uh, a worksheet, either a male superhero or a female superhero. And in the middle there is the sort of the agenda. So if you're the type, and I know because I am, that likes to follow things along or check things off, I'm a big like list maker and box checker. So uh, you, can, you can check off the introduction part and uh, we're going to move right into the first part of the section which is why creativity matters. And really, the, the reason I think creativity matters is based on, without it, we'd have no sort of innovation. We'd have no uh, inventions. We'd have no creative thought. So what we need to re recognize is that things like, you know, that we take almost for granted, electricity, computers, air travel, cell phones, you know, anything that is in our kind of world was invented twice. Once it was invented in somebody's mind, and then once it was invented, you know, in reality. And I love the uh, Thomas Edison quote, you know, creativity is 1% inspiration and 99% uh, perspiration. And so um, today we're mostly focusing on that 1% because without that 1%, you know, you wouldn't have the opportunity to do the other 99%. And I'm not discounting the hard work that takes place, but you've got to have a creative idea first. Uh, and I think also creativity is sort of what, you know, makes life worth living in a lot of cases. It, it's what gives us film and literature and music and movies and all the things that are exciting that we like to do on the weekends, you know, when we're not working. So in that way, creativity is so essential. And uh, I love this quote. This is a CEO from a big uh, landscape and planning firm, EDA. And we buy and sell in the business of ideas. So you have to, no matter what, uh, get the next best idea. If you run out of ideas, then you're out of business. And to help illustrate the sort of importance of uh, business or, uh, creativity and design, this is a really interesting uh, stock chart that tracked the performance of 100, it's, it took place in the UK. And the UK has the equivalent of the S&P 500, and, but it's called the FTSC 100. It's basically the 100 top stocks. And what they did was they measured the, uh, right here is the, the normal uh, FTSC companies. And then they also came up with this design index, these companies that actually value creativity. And they measured those stocks right here over a period of 10 years. And so as you can see, the companies that value creativity and design significantly, so not only are they coming out with great products, but they're actually financially more solvent and more valuable, which I think is a really powerful statement. And I have a, uh, I'm going to give you a handout at the end with a whole bunch of resources that gives you access to this entire report if you want to go deeper. But I think it's a really uh, impressive graph of the importance of, of creativity. This is a, a fantastic book. Anybody read this? Whole New Mind by Dan Pink. Put it on your reading list. His whole point is that right brain thinking is going to rule the future. And I, I have to agree. If you think about sort of where we came from, you know, back in the olden days, it was the agrarian society where we farmed and we extracted things out of the earth. And then we moved into the...